Hey guys, it's TZO with Engineers. I am in my studio in Los Angeles, California. I'm gonna be doing a breakdown for a song called On My Mama for an artist called Victoria Monet, a song that I love from the minute they sent me the demo. And then I was lucky enough to be able to get my hands on it. So yeah, let's jump into it. What you guys are seeing here on my screen is the mix session, the approved mix eight that came out. Um, so yeah, let's run through it. So this is the demo that I'm basically referencing um, and I have it on a button on my gray. So I'm able to jump between the two of them as I'm mixing and sort of putting things together. Um, so yeah, so that's the first thing is I have my demo. I'm able to go back to it, listen and kind of get the, the vibe for the record. So I start with drums. So we're gonna come up here to the kick and um, yeah, you know what, should we play the record one time just to, we'll just play it down really quick from the top and then let you guys hear it and then we can jump in. They say she get it from her mama. I'ma say you fuck her right. Body root is unpolite. Don't be in the humble type. Tell me, is you down? Cause I'm trying to go up tonight. Hoes ain't hope she's left and right. I just want to live in a fantasy. I think we deserve it right. Top of the memories I've ever made in my life. Permanent ecstasy. The ladies is pimps tonight. All right, cool. So I just wanted to give you guys kind of like a little playback so you guys could hear the song if you hadn't heard it before. Um, let's jump right into the drums because that's usually my starting point. When I start, I'll have everything muted and I'll rebuild the mix instrument by instrument, refing back and forth from the reference to kind of see where things are sitting. Um, so first thing is the kick. Let's jump into a couple of things. So as I play the kick, I'm doing very, and again, with drums and stuff, I do very little. I just try to take out what's not necessary. Um, so we got a little uh, cut right here at 49, a little boomy 128, and then a little resonant 414 there, boom. Compression, I'm usually using the, my first compressor with a kick is usually the Neutron. It's very transparent and it doesn't give you too much of like that pulling effect that you get sometimes squashing so i'm doing very little it's probably a db maybe a db and a half of, of reduction um and after that i'll hit it with just a, one more compressor just to hold everything in together what i'm trying to do usually to get loud with a mix i need to reduce the dynamics of things like the kick and the bass so that i'm able to get it to be loud but still hitting um so boom that's the compression next thing i bring in is the clap so I'll bring the clap in with the, with the kick like this. And what I'm doing here is I'm doing quite a drastic two, almost two and a half or a little more than two and a half at uh, 1300. And for me, I think let's, let's solo this. That's kind of like a, a resonant frequency. You can even see as it's playing that it's coming up above here and it's showing like that's a pretty big thing right there. So boom, I brought that down a little bit and that actually brought a little more heightened focus on the high end because as I brought this down the focus drove this way into this section here so I was able to get it clear um after that I guess I needed a little more uh clarity on that let's take this off so you can hear right there this specter brought in a lot of of uh pop and and brightness to the it's just cutting through a lot better than without it After that, I hit it with an EQ, which again, I brought down at this is 12, 1200. The other one was at 13 up here. So I still brought a little more here. 
and I did just a hair, a point two up, 5K and above on the Neutron. Um, after that, I hit it with the C2. I'm a huge fan of the C2. It's a really versatile, versatile uh, plug-in for compression. This is the rim shot, which is a layer with the clap together. So over this part of the record, they're not layered. And then it kind of, the, the, when the hook comes in, the layers come in together. Um, so we have that, and then we have this percussion loop. Let's hear this. So that's giving me some nice space. Let's play this together. And again, that, just a little nudge here on some of this. There's already some some saturation factor and, and some, some good stuff on the sample itself. So I didn't need to do too much besides, besides corrective stuff. So a little bit here and then a little boost on that top end just to give it a little air, especially with that reverb that it has. And then after that, our comp, pretty low ratio, doing about almost three dBs of reduction. Cool, cool, cool. Um, then we have this percussion instrument, which is this. So that, what I'd imagine I did is I probably, yeah, exactly, I took out that right there. So what I did here is I leveled it out a little more because if not, that sound is like, it's piercy in that frequency. So around 500, brought that out, little compression. Again, a very low ratio doing what? A little more than three dB, probably four dBs of reduction. Um, and then last part of the drum section is this swell which I actually put a doubler on it and threw it to the side because I wanted some side information because a lot of the instruments in this record up until this point before the horns come in and everything is pretty mono. Um, once I did that, I cut a little bit of the top. I'm even cutting top here on this. Um, I'm not afraid to just, sometimes the reductions can be really big. I mean, 1.73, 1.25. And then over here on this side, what do we have here? Does it show or am I not seeing it? What is this? Yeah minus three on this on this shelf right here so i'm definitely not afraid to get rid of what i don't want and you should be too for sure all right cool so drums are all in this is what all the drums sound like together so all these drums are running to a drum bus which is here so i'm just i'm not limiting with this i'm just hitting it with this little center knob here limiting happening here Little bit of gold clip, shout out my boy Schwab, who uh, makes great plugins. Um, I'm not using this, but I have that there just in case, because a lot of times, a lot of times what will happen is the kick will still end up, even through my limiting and compression, my kick will end up sticking out. So I can use this Ozone um, if I need it. Specifically in this song, I didn't end up using it. Um, and I don't use it too often unless I'm really having trouble with the kick. Let's jump into the 808. So this is the 808 on its own. I don't usually use our bass. When I use our bass, I have it down to here and I just put a hair. This is what came on the bass. So I worked after the pro, after the pro cue in the bass. I, this is my pro cue. So this is what I'm doing. So starting from here, a lot of times what I'll do with stuff is like, I'll figure out what is useful and what is not and what keeps things sounding like the demo and what is not necessary. So after the R bass, I came in with this pro cue and I took out a little bit more from what they had done here on this EQ. Boom. Lo-fi, little bit of 0.1 distortion. MB2 is a really useful plugin in my eyes. I feel like it just brings that low stuff closer to the high stuff. Um, compression, again, I, I love using this Neutron on kick and bass. It's real smooth and transparent, but on this one, I'm definitely getting close to probably four dBs of reduction there. And then after that, half a dB of reduction with the, with the C2. And there's two basses on this song. There's the verse part, which is more of a live bass. So this is my EQ. So I came in, I came in with my EQ here, the lo-fi that I used on this bass, the MV again, a little bit of compression. This one's adjusted differently because this bass is different than the, uh, than the other 808. And then 3 dB of reduction here and a little more resonant thing. My ears are really sensitive to resonant stuff and things that sort of build up and resonate together. So I'm always constantly EQing stuff like that out. 
underneath it. It's just like a little hidden under base that's underneath that one to give a little more body. And on this one, I'm really slamming it because I'm really just trying to get the feel more, more than like having that provide low end for those sections. Cool. So that's bass and drums. Let's play those things together so you can hear them played together. I really like those percussion like voice things that come with it and this little like oot thing that is actually really dope when it plays. Good, you can Let me play the bass and that together. It's just really nice to hear that. And then this section here. Cool. So that's drums and bass playing together. Let's unmute, let's unsolo these and we'll move right into the first piece of music which is this main pad that goes across the entire song. So this main pad, again, dealing with resonant frequencies right here. You can see I'm, I'm definitely getting in there and digging into those things. Silica is a great plugin to give a little bit of just flavor, you know, light saturation. It's kind of like Decapitator, but it's a little bit different as well. So, but I use, I use them in different, in different ways. I wouldn't use the Decapitator for this because I feel like it might be too much. Um, and then hitting it with the compression after, about two dBs of compression at the most, or almost there. Um, and that's in the hook. So let's move to the verse stuff. There's actually some guitar, which is those kind of like funky little um, staccato vibes here. And I pan that to the right because I didn't want it to be with the vocal because the vocal and that guitar can sometimes be in the same frequency. So I'm trying to move stuff out of the way. Definitely use Soothe on this because I can tell this guitar definitely has a lot of, of resonant frequencies in it. So I'm again, I'm not afraid to get in there and just get rid of all that shit. And a little bit of compression. We're doing two and a half, almost three dBs. So that's just to set it in place because it's not supposed to be some, especially as I pan it, you don't want something sticking out of just one speaker. So let's play it together. Cool. So that's the guitar. Let's jump into this pad here, which is on the horn break. So let's play this section because I don't think you guys heard it. It's the sample section. Perfect. So this section has this sort of dramatic crescendo pad and just a little bit of those frequencies getting it out and compression. Yeah, really getting in there because I'm not trying to have that be something that's that's pushing out in the mix when all this other stuff is going on. Um, another important part of the song is a sample. Oh my mama, oh my who, I look fly. So let's see, I'm really crushing the sample. I'm, I mean, I'm treating it as a sample instead of as a vocal in this particular situation. Um, shaved off, that sort of, I think this is the EQ. I think this is what the EQ they sent me, which is how they wanted, how much low when they wanted in the vocal. And then they had, they had shaved off a bit of the top as well. Um, after that, pretty heavy. Talking about eight, 10, eight, nine, 10 dBs of reduction there. Um, and then this is, this is my EQ where I went in and surgically got out all those frequencies that were bothering me. And then I added another level of compression because it just, it wasn't enough. If I were to, uh, take this off. You can kind of tell how the mama and stuff is all more flat and more, more more flush against the record. Cause again, it's a sample and there's other vocals and horns that are here, which are a little more dynamic. All right, cool. So jumping into the horns next, which comes after most of the program music stuff. These are live recorded horns by a girl named Kyla Moscovich. Shout out my Argentinian counterpart in this music, in this song right here. 
Okay, cool. So I'm going to solo these horns. There wasn't much I did to it. I really thought that they had done a great job of recording it. Um, let's play this. So I really just gave it some compression. I didn't even EQ it. Yeah, almost 3 dBs of reduction there. Um, and these are the sections that are in the horn break. There's also, I mean, this song has tons of tracks, you know, because of the horns. But let's start, let's start minimizing some of this stuff so we can get that out of the way. Boom. And let's unsolo these. Let's bring this smaller. And then let's go to this horn section here. So again, same compression they had. I left their compressor and I put some EQ here that I had done. And then I just threw Soothe on there because there were some some frequencies in this area that were bothering me. Um, so these horns, and then we have this other section. These are the hook horns. So let's solo these. And these are some EQs that I had done. I just brought down a shelf here and brought this down um, it was just a bit resonant there. Um, boom. And that together with everything is... I, was high. I put that on my own mama, on my hood. I look fly, I look good. You can't touch my back, what you... Boom, so they're very natural. I mean, there's not much happening to the horns. They, they cut them very well. And again, their team is, is solid when it comes to this. So I wasn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't doubt that they had done some stuff on their own already. And this is just like a, a pickup line going into the hook that kind of goes with this. I think it's harmonizing it. Let's solo these against the these ones here because it looks... Oh no, it's just stacking. It's just stacking on top of that just to give it a little more oomph. Um, and then we're going to move to these end horns, which are added horns that come in towards the end of the record. Um, let's see. Solo these... So these, I believe, are harmonizing or doing an octave to these. So that section here. And then after those horns, we move down here. And again, this is pretty much the order that I mix the record in. Like when I have my assistant set everything up, the drums come, then the bass comes, then the music comes, and then live instruments like guitar and stuff like that will be after that before we jump into the vocals. So that's the exact order I'm actually mixing the record in. Um, let's see what these are. So I think these are supporting, and again, I don't know if these were recorded because they are in stereo, which makes me think that they might be supporting VST horns to just give it some bite because they're thin, you know, you're not going to get that like full sound you get from from real horns. So this is kind of a nice texture underneath it. Which is really nice. It just gives it that real brass bite that uh, that you normally hear. And again, I think these are VST horns that support the other horns. A lot of times this is a great idea to do because you get a little bit of texture difference between the different horns instead of it all being from the same source this will actually give you a little more separation when you actually tuck stuff in like this um these are below there would be more of an issue if these were like the main horns and then the recorded horns were supporting then you might be like eh, what's the point but with this it's great because you give it that support where you 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 don't really hear these as much as you feel that bite coming from it um and then this is the last group of horns yeah so these are like the high really high horns And they're really tough. They're just there to sort of create feeling more than anything. So now that we reached this part, we reached where the demo is. I usually have the demo separate between where my vocals are and where my music is. So here's the demo, and we're gonna jump into the vocals now. Um, so I'm just gonna play through the verse. So let's see what we did to Victoria's voice. So let's get somewhere comfortable here. Let's just put it here. Um, so Victoria's voice, boom, I did a cut here, took out some resonant frequencies here and here. 
Um, I added about 3 dBs of 10K, and you can see when I take it off. When they say she get it from her mama, I'ma say you fuck right, body boot is on That gives it that crispy, that crispy, you know, EQ on top. So 10K boost, about 3 dBs. When they say she get it from just a her hair mama, of limiting. I love using this plugin just to get a little gain. The Neutron, which this is a plugin that the the the, the Pro Q and the Neutron I use very differently. As you can see with like the Pro Q, this is more surgical type of stuff where I'm notching in specific places versus this is more like a shaping EQ for me. So I'll go in and I'll do broad shapes and, and cut things broadly. And that combination sort of makes it so that the two plugins are not working in the same fashion but they are working hand in hand after that i threw a when little she get it from limiter which i love using this little dmg audio limitless um but again when i'm doing this stuff it's not like i'm blowing this down to fucking minus 10 like i'm doing very minimal when stuff she get it from her mama. minus one on the threshold so it's barely doing when anything she get it another plugin i put on there was this fresh air which i love when i need air on things when i need that really high air to sort of you know, bring out the texture and stuff of the words and everything. So I got 8% fresh air here. Soothe, I use on pretty much all my vocals. Um, I'll put this on two times high and I'll lower the mix down to like 75 or 60, wherever I need it. And that's just controlling, that's just sort of controlling anything that I didn't catch with the EQs. Deesser. Occasionally the deesser I'll use two, one for this zone up here, which is like 6k and up. And then sometimes the issue lies more in the, you know, one, 2k to 4k. So in this record particularly, it was there that I was having issues with. When they say she get it and then finish it off with a C2. When they say she get it from her mama, I'm a stay and again, right. this is all is just working like hand in hand, piece by piece. And then me, at the end, I just have I'm trying to go a little tonight. under 3 dBs of said. reduction. Um, yeah, so that's the that's the verse lead. And, and most of it is sort of similar. I do, there are changes that need to happen between different sections, whether she's changing key or whether whatever's happening. Um, so yeah, so this is pre-hook, hook. I like to treat all my sections separately. Um, it doesn't really make sense for me to make changes for stuff that may relate to this section that have nothing to do with this section of the hook. So I keep everything really, really, um, really separated. So let's jump in to the second verse. So the second verse, even though it is the second verse, it's completely separate from the first verse. I don't like anything being on the same track so I can treat everything exactly how it needs to be treated without compromising because another section that's okay on this side might be fine. So boom, these meters are meters they left. I didn't even touch them. So I left them on there. A lot of times I like to work from what, where people are in this case, the meter really doesn't make a difference. Um, but I did leave it on there. This section, I, this is, this is a section where this vocal here, I didn't, I, I needed a different tree, something slightly different where I needed to make an adjustment just for this vocal. So instead of uh, keeping it on the same track and trying to just leave it, I actually made a duplicate and I actually put an EQ here before it actually reaches the group bus. Second goes stupid, stop it like a toothpick. And the reason why I did that is you can hear with her voice, she's actually doing da -na -na -na, and she's going up there into like kind of a, a sharp area with her voice. So that's where I pulled this EQ just for this section. As you can hear here, that's not happening. Like a grandma with a peppermint. They say, oh, she smell good. That's just cause I'm having sin. Sex game goes stupid. Stopping like a toothpick. So you can see why I needed to have a separate EQ there to like kind of compromise, like just, you know, not compromise, but take that down a little bit. So boom, we did that. We have a background here on the hook. What's this? Let's hear this. These are like some ad lib backgrounds and I think there should be, there's probably some crazy, yeah, the Avox Duo. So this is kind of, this is from Antares. I love this plugin. It's dope at making things kind of sound out of the center, like a more of a, a wider image, light EQ. And this is the Valhalla verb they had on the vocals. So again, I didn't want to mess with what the verb sounded like too much because it actually does sound dope. I'm a The verb actually separates it a little bit. And a lot of times it's like, sometimes you have to ask yourself, like, 
if this is dope, then why change it? You know, like everything doesn't have to be done with ego. You can just be like, that's dope. Let me work off of that and get it to where it needs to be. Cool. So we got outro lead, which let's hear this. Mama, my hood. I look like, I look good. So that's a set. That's a, a vocal that's kind of going with some other background vocals and the and the vocal sample, which is up here in the music, which we spoke about earlier, which is right here. Boom. So this vocal sample here goes into this goes into this section, which is the outro. So it all plays together. And background wise, let's jump into some background. So the reason why you're seeing this stuff up here is because we were having trouble sometimes auto tune going from one system to another. So I had my assistant Ignacio print down all the auto tunes so that I wouldn't have any issues when I was mixing the record. So here is real light. They're just there to support the lead and give a little bit of imagery to be left and right. So everything's pan hard left and right. Um, and on this, I think I left, I just left what they had. There was nothing that I didn't like. So I came in with my EQ and I did this and then I hit it with a little compression. But again, I'm getting this stuff sometimes and it's like, it sounds good already. You just need to sort of touch it up. You don't need to get in there and like change everything. Like don't fix things that aren't broken. Same thing up here. You're going to see the committed tracks up here that Ignacio did and solo these increase that you can see that's a really dope little part right there so it's like you barely even hear it it's more of a feeling thing and, and a lot of times these creative decisions are being made by the producer and the artist so i i'm respecting it like i could have made that a lot louder and made it more prominent but there's already other things happening there there's other leads and and the samples playing and stuff like that so you got to kind of choose and in this case you know artistically this made sense to kind of have it be more of a feeling thing cool so we'll jump here we got a couple more takes of backgrounds and again these are groups that they had made so i kind of try to keep it intact and these are just like little stacks that just kind of she and the EQ is different on there. You can hear it's more of like a radioed out type thing. Well, she and that goes. Say, well, she so you can hear the difference between those vocals as the lead is playing. It sounds a little bit different, but that's that's what creates a separation. Um, here. And this is sort of a section that was just supposed to be like. Sort of just up in there. And then we're getting down here. And this this song definitely had a lot of tracks. I mean, there's a lot of shit in here. Um, but everything's sort of grouped because again, I'm trying to keep things intact. Once you start separating the blends and changing things, that's when you start to get into issues with the artist and the producer. And this is all just supporting like you barely hear but it's there and it's there to create a little more width and imagery and in, inside of the, the the picture some outro stuff let's hear these together and a lot of this i'm just leaving what they gave me you know i probably adjusted this compressor a little bit de-esser so it's real light stuff it's so low too in the mix And then we come down here. And again, I left a lot of what they did on these. Because these are so in the back. It's smooth. It didn't need anything, really. I mean, a lot of times stuff just doesn't need stuff when it comes from a good source and good engineers. What's this? So that's a little section here. You can barely hear, you can kind of hear that breathiness underneath the, the horn outro there. Awesome, and we're reaching here, the end here soon of this song. So let's go here. 
in that section. So these, this, and the horns, I think. those That's what's meant to be layering here with all these together. Couple more here. And I put this compressor on here. They were sticking out a little too much. And then we got the last two here. Again, a different EQ sort of uh, thing going on this one. Let me see where they, I think they did with the effects rack. Um, but yeah, the different filter just creates texture and separation between other vocals. Perfect. So now let's run it all the way back up to the top. Boom, boom, boom. This is probably a two and a half hour, three hour, possibly four hour mix. I don't remember exactly how long it took me, but it's definitely a lot to deal with, with a lot of horns and stuff like that. Um, once everything is done, it runs out of my summing mixer, it hits my uh, VT5 com uh, EQ, and then what's on here? Just a little ruby with the light on. So the light on is just giving me a little clarity. I'm not actually boosting anything else, I don't think. Yeah, no. Not boosting anything else. I'm cutting out bad frequencies overall, like this, and this, and this. So those are all frequencies that I just dug out of the entire mix together. I hit it with a little fresh air after. Um, not using this. Again, this is for the same thing that we were talking about on the drum bus, where if I feel like the low end is just a little too hot, I can just multiband this down a little bit. Uh, this is my overall EQ that I use on my master, which I love this EQ for just that finishing touch and bringing down bad stuff. Believe it or not, like I'm doing two and a half dBs reduction there, two dBs reduction there we're boosting a dB 6.7K six, 6 and up and dropping here at nine. So I'm like kind of boosting, but still taking that out. Um, and then from there hitting this, Mama, which oh I'm getting a little bit of, just squeezing the mix a little bit. And then we jump into the, Mama, oh my the God particle, Mama, oh my 40% hood. and doing maximum three dB reduction and then the limiter, Mama, which the limiter, oh that final, this final limiter is, is not doing anything in this record, but when I do need that extra push, I can push a half a dB more here and push this uh, enhanced curve up and that'll actually get me a little bit louder um, if I need to be. And yeah, so that's the print. And then from there, it just hits this track and we record the pass and, and that's it, it goes off to the artist. So let's highlight three key plugins from this mix that I use a lot. You guys can probably already start to guess. Pro Q3, Pro C2, and the uh, Neutron EQ, which we'll grab off of a vocal really quick here. So these plugins are probably my biggest go-tos. They don't seem like they're special plugins because they're really not. They're very basic plugins, but it's just what you do with them that allows you to then make things sound special. So those are my three top plugins that I probably use on, on, a, on a daily basis for everything, for having to go in and cut things out and compress things generally. So yeah, that was a mix breakdown for On My Mama for Victoria Monet. And I uh, appreciate you guys coming and watching.